Week three, class two, we're going to start off by looking at straight lines and their importance to engineers. And we'll finish up with a, a little bit on non-straight lines. The most important engineering concepts are based around linear functions. It's necessary to understand graphing points and lines and the slope and different forms of equations that make up linear equations. As part of their jobs, engineers often interpret data and determine the lines of best fit for given data sets. The engineering applications that are useful can be represented in a variety of ways. Particularly of interest is direct variation, which is the form many engineering applications take, such as Hooke's law, that's why there's a picture of a spring, and Ohm's law, which is why there's a picture of a circuit board. When considering slopes, though, engineers must be able to read and understand graphs that show displacement, velocity, and acceleration to then analyse data from testing sites to learn how to design their products to be more efficient and more safe. Other engineers use Ohm's law frequently for it states the most basic relationship between voltage, current and resistance. It's used in almost all calculations to analyse and test circuits in any electrical piece of equipment or device. Any function that can be written as mx plus c is a straight line. The gradient you will know as being the rise over the run, or actually what this really means is the change in y over the change in x. We often call this m, and we'd write it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It tells how steep a line is. C is the vertical intercept. And we say that the function has a zero, in other words, where it crosses the x axis. So where it's cutting the x axis. And we can work that out that it cuts there where x is equal to negative c over m simply by rearranging the expression above. So this is the vertical intercept and you really need to remember this is where x equals zero. That's the thing there for the vertical intercept. And for the zero, it's where y is equal to zero. We've got an example like y equals 3x plus 4. Drawing your axes. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4. So it's going to cut the y axis at 4. And the function is going to have a 0. It's going to cross the x-axis when x is equal to negative c over m, which is negative 4 over 3. So about, about there somewhere. Because it's a rule, we can join it up like that. Looking at these three functions, for the first one, y equals 2x minus 1, the slope is 2, and the y-intercept is negative 1 y equals 2x plus 7, the slope is 2, and the y-intercept is 7, so it cuts the y-axis at 7. The last one, y equals negative 2x, the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 0. That means it cuts the through the origin. If we just look a little bit further and say the first one, where it's got a slope of 2, really 2 is 2 over 1, and that means that it's 2 up and 1 across. Looking at these three examples, they've all got the same slope, which means they're going to be parallel, but they've got different y-intercepts. So the first one has a slope of 2, and it cuts through the y-axis at 3. 
So a slope of two from there means it goes up two and out one. So it's a bit like that. The next one goes through one and it's parallel because it has the same slope. And the third one goes through negative two and it's parallel. These three graphs, the thing that they have in common is the y-intercept. Each of them cuts through at 2. So we need to mark off where y is equal to 2. The first one has a slope of 1, so it's 1 up and 1 out. Just call that one. The second one has a slope of two, so it goes two up and one out, but it goes through the same point on the y axis. And the third one has a slope of three, so it goes three up and one out. So about there. Oops. So they're all going through the same point on the y-axis. You will have noticed some of those curves that we've looked at have got a negative slope. Some have got a positive slope. Okay, let's see what it means. A positive slope means that our line is going in a positive direction. So that's a positive slope. If we have a negative slope, then the graph goes that way. And if we have a zero slope, then the line is parallel to the x-axis. An example of this would be, say, y equals 4. And the slope of that is zero. Now, you might want to think about what x equals 4 looks like, and that's going to be a graph that looks like that. And you might want to say, what is the slope there? Well, we would actually have to say that the slope is infinite, because if we use the, if we use the formula m, so it's the difference in y over the difference in x. The difference in x is 0, so you're ending up with your change in y over 0, which doesn't work. So we'd say a vertical line has a slope, an infinite slope. Just ignore the fact that the equation is actually written at the bottom. We're asked to find the equation for a line that passes through 2, 5 and a half, two. First up, we need to find the gradient. And the gradient is going to be five minus two, which is three, over two minus a half, which would be 1.5. Now it doesn't matter whether you go the other way because both the signs then will be negative and it's, it's going to be negative over negative, which is still positive. We can work out if we had the picture of a line that's going to go through a half, two, and two, five, like that. We could read off that actually that was going to go through one there, so that we know that our y-intercept equals one. So that would now give us enough information. So we need to fill out that y is equal to mx plus c, y equals 2x plus one.
Again, we're given two points and we're asked to find the, the equation of the line joining them. Our points this time are 0 and 2, and our other point is 6, negative 2. Okay, we need to find the slope, the gradient. It's the difference between the y over the difference between the x. So it's going to be 2 minus negative 2 over 0 minus 6. So that's negative 2 thirds. Now, we can actually figure out what is the vertical intercept. The vertical intercept, if you remember, is where x is equal to 0. And we're given that point. We're actually given the point where x is equal to 0. It's a. So our vertical intercept then is y is equal to 2. Putting all that together then, y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. If we were to draw that, what we now know is that it's going to go through 2. We were also given that it goes through the point 6, negative 2, so about there. And we can work out that it's going to go through 3 once we've got the equation like that. There are different ways of finding the equation of a line. It depends how much information you've been given, whether we've been given the slope and the coordinates of one point, in which case we'd use, use formula 2 there, or if we're given two points, then we can use equation one. Let's just use the same points as we did before. So let's look at points um, A, where A was zero and two, and where B is six and negative two. We can use any of these versions, um, but we could work out that it's Y minus two, over negative 2 minus 2 is equal to x minus 0 over 6 minus 0. And then if we rearrange that, we get y uh, actually that should be y minus minus 2. So we get y plus 2 over negative 4 is equal to x over 6. Rearranging that gives us, as we had before, that y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Now if we needed to find the distance between those lines, we would use this formula here, which is just a variation on Pythagoras' formula. So we would find the square root of the dis difference between the x's. So it would be 6 minus 0 squared plus negative 2 minus 2 squared and that gives us the distance as negative 52. That is the exact answer. That's the exact answer. Now sometimes, sometimes you're asked to rewrite that and this may not work. So let's see if it does. Let's see if we can write this as maybe 4 times 13. 4 threes at 12, 4 ones are 4 years. So now we can rewrite that as root 4 times root 13. So that would be 2 root 13. That is still the exact answer. So that's a third. So sometimes you're asked to write your answer with a suit, and that is what that means there.